Boris Graffiti 6 is a nice step up over the previous versions. There's about 30 additional special effects to work with. While Boris Graffiti makes some really terrific text, what you may not be aware of is all the special effects stuff that you can create. This short animation was created 100% within Boris Graffiti and you can get a lot more elaborate than this. But one of the nicest things of all is you can now fully customize your workspace, whereas before it was kind of a cluttered thing to work with. So I want to show you a very fast way to set up a pretty nice workspace. I recently got bit by an insect that gave me a disease called Lyme disease. It's affecting my speech right now, so if my speech is a little bit off, bear with me. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is open your standalone version of Boris Graffiti. Don't open it within Corel because it's temperamental and it wants to act up when you're trying to make these adjustments. This is a fairly fast and painless operation. Click on Window, Workspace, come down to Text Side by Side. Come down to your Controls down here, left click, then you're going to drag it up here and let go when you see Drop here. Same with your Styles. and your options. Open the window, come down to History Palette, drag this up here as well, and also your Library Browser, and drag it up here. You can drag these into different orders if you wish. But what you end up with here is a nice long timeline. Here's where your information is. You've got all your controls and different windows, quick and easy to grab. Come up to Window, select Workspace, and Save. I'm just going to call this my go-to style. You call it whatever you wish. Select OK. And you now can go to that anytime you want and then if you want to look at something different I don't know why you would honestly but that's all you gotta do okay the first thing I want to cover is making this program easier on the eyes okay let's say for instance you're working without a background and you're, you're faced with this checkerboard pattern you don't have to be stuck with that you can come up here edit preferences change this from checkerboard to a solid color. Okay, I don't recommend black and the only reason is that if you're working with drop shadows in your text you won't be able to see them. So I'm going to go to a light blue, lighten it up pretty good, select OK, and also this gray background is a little bit distracting. You can adjust its brightness to blinding and then I myself prefer 10 it's a perfect personal preference. It's nice and dark. You can see what you need to see and all this area of nothingness is fairly hidden away. Okay, I'm going to select OK. And now you see you've got this blue background instead of that checkerboard pattern. And even if you have a blue drop shadow, you can still see it. If you use black, you wouldn't be able to see any of this drop shadow. And surprisingly enough, almost any shade of blue text will still show up on the blue. And all you got to do is go back into your preferences and turn it back to a checkerboard pattern if that doesn't work for you. Okay, from there I'm going to open the text window. And when you come down to the drop down menu for your fonts, you get this alphabetized list. But you can't tell what any of these fonts look like. You can help yourself out a bit by coming to Preferences, Use Fonts in the Fonts menu, select that. Then when you come here, even though the print is quite small and you can't, you know, tell extremely well what they look like, you can tell a lot better. It gives you a better idea than trying to memorize the names of all this stuff. 
Okay, and probably one of the most important settings of all, if you've been working on a project for two, three, four hours, and you've never saved your work and the power goes out, you could lose all your work and be right back to scratch one. All your work is gone. So go to your Tools tab. This will save your work automatically every 10 minutes. That way if the power goes out, 99% of your work will be saved. You might lose the last few steps you made over the past seven or eight minutes, but other than that, you're good to go. Now, under Maximum Undoable Actions, that's basically how many times you can select Undo. 30 sounds like a lot, but really it's not. I would go with a couple hundred. That should be more than enough to get you through any situation. It is saved as metadata, which basically means it's not going to eat into your memory to save a lot of undos. If you don't have enough undoable actions, you're in trouble. So this is just to ensure you have enough undoable actions. Okay, so that pretty well covers basic settings and layout. I'm going to get into stuff like creating this planet, you know, rotating it, so forth and so on. You can use particles to send your text up in smoke. And just a whole range of other things that I'm going to get into after this tutorial. Tutorials covering that type of thing will be being released shortly. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and thanks a lot for tuning in. More to come.